nothing else matters My feet in the stirrups, I'm so happy There's nothing like the sound of Carolina hoodies We're in Blanche, North Carolina at Melrose Farm, and we're going to do a segment today on Blue Bloods Thoroughbred Adoption and Placement. And with me now is Elizabeth McDonald, and she's the founder of this. So tell us a little bit about your, your um, organization here and how it works. Well, we started in 2013, and we're a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, we started to save off-the-track thoroughbreds from a perilous um, Ending. So right. anyway, we um, I was the the director for rerun uh, for North Carolina for about seven years before mm-hmm. I did this, and then um, I had a lot of racehorse owners and people that encouraged me to start my own. So in 2013, we started Blue Bloods um, and formed a nonprofit and have a board and uh, officers and. There you have it. So you get horses in from um, race barns, I guess, upstate New York and New Jersey and different places? We we get them from all over the East Coast. We have owners from Virginia to all the way up to the Finger Lakes. Right. And um, they send us horses when they're no longer racing. Right. When they've gone into claiming races or, and most of the time they either, they have a little boo-boo, they'll have a bowed tendon or something that's usually fixable and they can be jumpers or whatever you want. But mm-hmm. they're, um, they have minor problems. And what was the rerun organization that you were talking about? Um, it was another off-the-track thoroughbred rescue, mm-hmm. and uh, we placed, we would take horses from mainly from Monmouth Park, mm-hmm. um, but other areas, and, um, and adopt them out. So that was sort of our model for right. this. And thoroughbreds are really a versatile horse. You know, you think of them as being just race horses, but they're in every discipline pretty much, aren't they? Absolutely. We've had horses go from for Western Pleasure, for uh, dressage, for hunter jumpers, fox hunters, trail riders, anything you can imagine. They've all um, they've all been able to do different things. And I would guess that in the thoroughbred um, breed, it would be like any other breed. Some horses are really great for running and some just aren't. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. I mean, some of them have no aptitude for it at all. Right. In fact, I have one owner that she said she raced her twice and she came in last every time and she just knew right off the bat that she was not going to make it as a racehorse. Right. So so that makes a great horse for all these other disciplines. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good. And how do people um, come? Make an appointment and come to visit you and see what you have, or how do they? We have an application screening process, and if someone contacts me through the website or any other way, I will send them out a a, a form where they'll, it's an application form, and they'll fill that out, get it back to me, and um, and then from there we'll go through it, call records, check vet records, and that sort of thing, and and then uh, they can make an appointment after they're an approved adopter. Okay. And then after that, they just keep coming until they find the one that they want that works for them? Yes. Uh, sometimes they see one on the website that they're right. very interested in, and they'll call about that particular horse. Right. And, um, and then sometimes not. Sometimes they'll come back several times until we get just the right horse for them. Right. But they come in frequently, so it's... There's not much of a wait for them, generally. All right. Well, that sounds really good. So, Elizabeth, what was your background before you started this? Well, I have a BFA in Communication Arts and Design from um, Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond. And after school, I went to New York, to Manhattan, and lived there for 18 years. Wow. As an art director and worked in television and packaging and uh, in the music industry. 
but mainly I did a lot of cosmetic packaging, worked for Estee Lauder, mm -hmm. Revlon, and those were my clients in my business. Right. Um, awesome. <laughs> That's no small change. No, no, it's not. It was fun. I enjoyed it. And what brought you back to North Carolina? Well, my husband and I both were art directors in the city, and we wanted to have um, a change of scenery and wanted to have a farm, but didn't want to necessarily be tied to New York. I was from Chapel Hill originally and thought this would be an opportunity for us to see what else was out there. Right. So um, we got this farm. We actually stayed with my parents in Chapel Hill, where I was from, for a little while, for a month or so, and started looking for a house. We drew an arc around where we could commute to and from and ended up here. This was 30 minutes from Hillsboro. We put an office there, and that's what we ended up doing. And I saw a historical marker out front, so tell us a little bit about the farm itself. Well, Melrose um, was built in 1770, and it was a tobacco plantation. It was built by the Williamsons. First the father and then the, the grandson built the front house, which was built in 1820. And this was a pan, uh, tobacco plantation, and it was part of Brown and Williamson wow, tobacco. yeah. And this was the primary farm for that endeavor. Um, and it's had a succession of owners. And when we got it, it was very overgrown. And um, people had used it primarily for, as weekend houses because mm -hmm. we're out in the middle of nowhere. Right. And no one had really seriously farmed it either for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, so we proceeded to push back the shrubbery, or the, we proceeded to push back the woods, really, mm -hmm. and uh, turn it back into a working farm. That's awesome. And a lot of the buildings are the original buildings? Yes, they are. Most of them are. Um, We've added to and, and built things on, but they're all original. All right. It's a beautiful, beautiful setting, and what a great place to have thoroughbred horses. Thank you. So tell me how your organization's funded. Do you accept donations from individuals? or We do accept donations, and sometimes a horse will come in from the track with um, a stipend that will help keep us going. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have applied for grants right. from the ASPCA and from TCA. And this year we won an award from from the Third Red Charities of America. And wow. So we won the first award that they put out for the year, which was a feather in our cap. For sure. And then you have a program with one of the colleges? We do. Averett University um, in Danville, Virginia, mm -hmm. uh, has an equestrian school there, and they teach on our farm, in our ring, and how to retrain an off the track thorough, retraining the off the track thoroughbred course. Wow, I didn't know that was a course people could take. That's really cool. Yeah, it's very good. It's good for the horses. It's good for the students mm -hmm. and and the community. Everything about it is good. Very nice. So, so um, last year you participated in the Year of the Horse at the State Fair, and I'm assuming you'll be back again this year in the Alley of Breeds? Yes, we plan to. So folks can come by the State Fair and check out your organization and yep. actually see a thoroughbred and learn more about them. They can. They'll, we'll have two or three of our horses there. and um, Excellent. And how can people reach you? Uh, they can reach us through the website um, at www.bluebloodstv.com. Org. Okay. My name is Scott Brookins and I am the owner of Brookins Construction and MD Barnmaster of the Carolinas. At MD Barnmaster we have the best warranty in the business. We have a variety of designs to choose from. Our barns are easily customizable to meet and fit uh, meet your needs. Uh, we have financing available to those who qualify. Our barns are fire resistant and they hold their value with little maintenance. Let us build your dream barn for you today. Are you ready for that awesome outdoor experience? An outdoor living space that can be enjoyed by all? Let the expertise of award-winning Guard authorized contractor Harper Landscaping, serving Eastern and Central North Carolina, design and install that perfect space. A place to let the family enjoy and relax. A divine intervention to outdoor living. Whether it be a cookout with friends and family or an after-school hangout, Harper Landscaping can help you create that perfect space for many moments to cherish. 
With us now is Simri Flood, and Simri's from Burlington, North Carolina, and she does all the retraining here at the facility. So I have a few questions about thoroughbred off-the-track horses. Um, I'm assuming that they're taught when they're um, trained the first time to run wide open and they don't have a whole lot of stopping gear because they can make laps and slow down gradually. So what's involved for you to get them ready for folks like me to be able to ride them? Okay, well the first thing is involved is the rehabilitation if they've had an injury. We give them downtime. That can be anywhere from two weeks if they're just a little bit body sore, or that can be anywhere from eight months, um, depending upon the in injury that they've had. Um, when I first get on them, my I test out, you know, how well do they steer? How well do they stop? How well do they go? Mm -hmm. um, some of these horses are really not sensitive to leg. They're sensitive to the whip. Um, and some of them steer very well, depending upon their training. Some of them can't barely steer at all. Mm -hmm. So when I first get on, usually they'll like to go fast. My main thing is to get them to walk, to trot, and to canter. I don't even want to mess with the gallop yet. Um, and I don't even start jumping. I want to get them sensitive to the leg, um, to get them to move off the leg quickly, to get them to move towards um, lateral pressure, um, and to stop when I need them to stop. So that's almost like worse than starting a, a fresh baby with no training because you have to unlearn everything they've learned, basically. It is in a way, um, but I've also found, you know, some pluses with it. They're used to the track, you know, track noise. Mm -hmm. So if they see a tractor or if they see a plastic bag or they, you know, see a scary object that usually a baby horse would react to, these horses don't react at all. They've been to the track, they've heard loudspeakers, you know, all sorts of noise. They're, they're used to that. They're... Mm -hmm. they're not sensitive like a young horse would be. Um, but And then I do have some horses that have come in and they're a little bit head shy because of, you know, tra maybe trainers at the track or they're a little bit, you know, they'll move off one leg but they won't move off your other leg. Um, so in a way, I've seen negatives and positives throughout this process. Okay. And what's the average length of time you work with a horse? Um, that would really depend upon the horse, the length of time. Um, I've had horses that, you know, I've ridden them maybe four weeks, a month, they're fine. They're, they've adjusted really well to their new life. And then I've had other horses that the ra racing is really ingrained in them. They've been racing maybe three, four years. Mm -hmm. They know how to race and that's what they think they're doing. So with those horses, it takes a little more time. Just maybe I'll take them out on a trail ride or walk through the field, just something calm and relaxing to get them used to the idea that they're not running in a circle anymore. They're gonna be a pleasure horse now. Right. Well, could you show us some of the horses and show us some of the things they can do? Sure, I would love to show you some of the horses. All right, good. Well, we'll tack up and meet you down there. All right. So, Simri, tell us about this thoroughbred. Okay, this is B.A. Love. She's four years old, um, raced about 18 times, won about 45,000. Um, she's fairly new to us. She's been here two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, she's just getting, this is my fifth ride on her, I think. So, she's got some steering issues, um, but we're working through that, and she's calmed down a lot since the first ride. When I got first got on her, she was very forward. She wanted to run. That's what she thought she was supposed to do. Right. But um, we've been improving her steering. Um, she's not very quick off the leg. I've been working on that. But overall, she's got pretty good gates, you know, pretty smooth. She's mm -hmm. uphill. She's, I really like this horse a lot. She's um, very smart, um, very personable. She loves right. people. And she'll come right up to you. And is she sound for everything? Um, she's got... Um, not going to be sound for jumping that the people that sent us to her did not want her to jump but um other than that she's got unlimited potential as far as the fox hunter or dressage or um you know pleasure riding mm -hmm. even western we're going to plan i plan to take her out on the trails get her used to some natural objects mm -hmm. some water um ditches that kind of thing okay so she's going to be a great horse for somebody all right a lot very of personality good. If you're interested in a career working with horses, then Martin Community College is the place for you. MCC's equine technology program is the only one offered among North Carolina's 58 community colleges. The program is management oriented with classes in breeding, nutrition, training, riding, equine health, and more. Graduates can leave MCC prepared to work in recreational and racing barns, breed to discipline oriented farms, or assistant farm management. For more information, contact Martin Community College today. Hi, I'm Rick Feniston. 
I trained my horse Jake to trust me and be brave in order to face the obstacle challenges and win in extreme cowboy races. It takes dedication, hard work, and innovation to train a champion. As an attorney representing injured persons, I use the same skills to win compensation for people injured in accidents or on-the-job injuries. If you've been injured in an accident or on the job and need advice, call me. I want to hear from you. This is Paul Dunn from Mule City Feeds. We've been delivering horse feed to Eastern North Carolina since 1981. And not only have we been delivering it, we've been leading the industry so far as compliance with state North Carolina and giving the best quality product possible. We test everything that comes in from the local farmers, we do quality assurance, and we deliver the product. Give us a chance. Your neighbor's giving us a chance. We'd like to have your business here at Mule City Feeds. Also, when you deal with the big feed companies, you might have to wait four or five days just to get the feed. Give us a call and you'll be shocked we'll deliver an hour. We're in Bolivia, North Carolina today at Horseplay Farm, home of our heroes. This is Neil Ward. Neil, tell us a little bit about your program. Um, we have uh, Our Heroes. Our Heroes works with our military and families of the military. And the reason it's Our Heroes, it could be anyone. It could be the spouse of someone who served in the military. It could be a firefighter, a police officer that's uh, went through any kind of trauma or just needs to get some therapy to, to relieve whatever's going on. I know horses contain a special magic where that's concerned. So tell us a little bit about some of the experiences you've had working with them. Um, well, we go to Camp Mizzoun once a month and we work with some active duty Marines. Uh, Julie Kamalowski uh, runs the Phoenix program up there and I visit them once a month with a therapy horse and these guys have no horse experience and they've come back and some of them suffer from post-traumatic stress and anxiety and different things and uh, we take a horse and uh, the horse is kind of like a detox. You know, mm -hmm. they start revving it and they suck the junk right out of them. But, um, they learn to move horses with their eyes and ride horses in a soft and uh, calm manner. And, and it, it just gives them a chance to smile and forget about whatever was bothering them prior to that. Right. When we were talking earlier, you were talking about how the, the soldiers and different um, heroes could relate to the horse being a prey animal. So would you explain that? Um, uh, we're predators, horses are prey animals, and these guys have been across seas and, and served in warfare where they become the, the prey instead of the predator, uh, walking around with a target on their back. So I think when you explain the prey, predator, human horse thing, they understand from the horse's side because they once were uh, uh, hunted down in, in warfare. Right. So, so they understand the feelings, the emotions, and whatever surfaces that the horse may feel too. So then they start relating and start, you know, mm -hmm. building that relationship. Yeah, I guess they really get in touch with their fight or flight instinct. Mm -hmm. I certainly would. Yeah, they learn, you know, too much pressure, they're going to leave. Yeah. You know, same as us as humans. And uh, these guys come back and, you know, uh, we tend to want to put a lot of pressure on these guys with questions. And uh, we go there, we ask no questions. We take them as they are and, and we try to put a smile on their face with a horse. That's wonderful. Now, how did you get involved with this? Um, about a year ago, I got a phone call. Uh, Ruth Jenkins and Philip Jenkins, they own Horseplay Farms. And um, they uh, been searching around trying to find a horse person that could relate with horses and people. So uh, I got a phone call and they called me out. And uh, June 1st, I've been here a year. That's wonderful. And you have quite a reputation as a horse trainer yourself. I know you've worked with the Lope Rescue Program. Yes, ma'am. And uh, Dusty was my Lope Rescue horse last year. He, uh, he was riding champion, and now he is the therapy horse. Um, it's like I tell the guys at Camp Majune, I could bring you a, a performance horse, but I'd rather bring a horse with a story. And, yeah. and Dusty had a story. He was unwanted, abused, neglected, and, and just didn't have a, a life worth basically living. And, and now he's, he's putting smiles on their faces and vice versa. So it's... Uh, the story helps a lot. Yes, it does. And you have your own business where you train horses for folks. Tell us about that. Yes, ma'am. Um, we uh, start colts here. We work with problem horses. Um, I call it wit's end. Wit's end is not that I'm a angry or a, a bothered person, but people get at their wit's end and, and can't get through to the horse, and they bring it to me, and uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we make progress, and then we relate it to the uh, transfer it to the human, and then they learn how to deal with their horse. And you work a lot with kids too? Yes, we work a lot with the uh, EC kids. Uh, 
we work with, we don't turn any kid away. Mm -hmm. We find a way, whether it gets a sponsorship for the child, um, whether we just do it until we find the means. We do a lot of out of pocket here because we don't want any kid to be turned away due to finances. Right. So um, we, we get a lot of sponsors. We do summer camps. People sponsor kids for summer camps. Um, we've had people, you know, make donations and we bring kids out that normally couldn't afford lessons and they, mm -hmm. get, they get lessons. If people wanted to make a donation or sponsor somebody, how would they go about that? Um, OurHeroesInc.org. They can go on our website and check us out and uh, see how to send us a donation. Okay. Um, it, it really, and our EC program is also um, help funded through Parks and Rec. Our local uh -huh. Brunswick County Parks and Rec has set up that program and it comes to the school system as their field trips. Oh wow. So, uh, but then we gain a lot of kids after the fact to right. carry on because they fall in love with the horse. So, you know, we, we never stop. So, um, what is your fondest memory of working with the, the veterans, for example? What moment did it make it all worthwhile to you? Um, there's so many. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, probably my right hand woman, Karina. Mm -hmm. uh, she came here, um, sent to me by Julie Kamalowski, and it took her about six months to contact me, but she came here and she's been here for six months now. She, uh, she came here to relieve some stress and mm -hmm. get things off her mind, and, and now she's. Uh, she helps me feed, she helps me warms up horses, she's helping train horses, and, and she's, she's making a go at being a horse trainer herself. All right, good, good. Well, thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you. With me now is Karina Depew, and Karina has been here for four months? About almost six months, I think. Okay, and what do you do here? <clears throat> I uh, follow Neil around and help him with whatever he needs. <laughs> and <laughs> how, how did you become involved with this program and why? I got the, his phone number and email from um, a friend and she uh, just figured that this would be a good idea for me and it, it helps, you know, with just relaxing and calming down and everything and mm -hmm. it's a good focus. So are you a veteran? Yes. Uh, and tell us a little bit about your military service. I spent nine years in the Marine Corps. I got out last October mm -hmm. and um, was a, got out as a staff sergeant. Right. I. Uh, I worked two different MOSs. I, I was I worked uh, electronic countermeasures and communication navigation on the Prowler, and then Lat moved into uh, cryptologic Arabic linguistics. So Whatever that is, <laughs> <laughs> Arabic linguistics. Okay. Just simple. All right. Very good. Well, thank you for your service to our country. We really appreciate all that you've done. And will you show us a little bit about what you do with Dusty? I'll get out of your way and turn it okay. over to you. Sorry, he's going. It's been a while since I've done this. It's all right. Just relax. Turn there him we. around. It'll be fine. <laughs> he just had to remind us he has a brain too. Yeah. <laughs> well, also I wasn't being clear, so it's okay. If you if you're not clear with what you want, then or you ask the question wrong, then he's like, well, what what exactly are you asking me to do? I don't I don't I don't know what you're asking. Sure. Well, that's a good point. And then. Just ask him to come back to me. Very good. If his feet get stuck and you're trying to get him to move, just doing half circles, looking at the hind end to get it to move. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you, to get them to be softer, you, you want to start with, like, what was it? Ask, suggest, and tell is what. He showed me how to do, but basically saying you, you do without without the motion first, and if they listen, that's great. But if then if they're not listening, then you suggest, hey, a little bit, and then if they're not, then you uh, you get a little louder. Right now, when you're working him, how does that help you? How does that make you feel? I mean, just I mean, I, I get frustrated by my own emotions, so um, I mean, I started out not like being nervous about coming into the round wings because I, I don't have any expor experience with horses so it was more everything was new everything was like learning so you you learn you learn how you respond to things you learn how to you learn how to calm yourself down because mm -hmm. you have to be able to do that around horses you can't you can't be frustrated you can't be angry because they won't want to be around you when you're like that right so you have to learn how to set everything aside 
when you come in here, it's almost, I wouldn't say necessarily like meditation, but it's a, it's a way of, I guess I don't want to call it control either. It's, it's, it's just redirecting your emotions redirecting you it, know, yes. in, a, in a healthier way, maybe. Yeah. And right. then it helps you otherwise. I mean, yeah. when you get upset about something later on, I mean, you end up, it's like, no, it's okay. I can just put it over here and then handle it when I, like, you can, hand, you can, you can break it down for yourself easier and, and handle mm -hmm. that situation separately and not let it build up. Because mm -hmm. that's what, like, you look you, from what horses do, too. You also learn that, like, say, when, when their emotions get bottled up and the pressure gets to be too much, then they explode. Right. And the same thing happens in people if you have, like, a bad habit of bottling up your emotions, the same thing happens. Mm -hmm. And you don't break it down for yourself to understand each thing separately. Right. And then when you kind of put it aside later on, you realize it wasn't all that big a deal to start with. Yeah. You're able Very to. therapeutic for sure. Yeah. And I, I can't resist petting them. I'm always <laughs> petting them. Yeah, I'm, I spoil them really bad because I pet them all the time. Well, they love Because I just love them. I think the best part about what like Neil teaches, you don't use treats or anything. Because yeah, it's don't. all about it's all about your relationship with the horse. It's not about bribes mm -hmm. because the minute you don't give them a bribe, then they're just like, Well, I don't want to do that, so screw right. you. That's right. <laughs> so Yeah. And then you learn how to catch do your it. Eye? Naturally. Does she catch your eye? She's Sierra. pretty. <laughs> She's a pretty girl. Yeah. All right. Very good job. North Carolina Horse Council welcomes you to the 4th Annual Cowboy Up event held September the 11th through the 13th in Lumberton, North Carolina at the Southeastern Agricultural Events Center. For more information, go to the NC Horse Council website at www.nchorsecouncil.com. This event is sponsored by the North Carolina Horse Council, the Lumberton Visitors Bureau, the Border Belt Horsemen's Association, Carolina Hoofbeats, Carolina Hoofbeats TV, Modern Horseman, Modern Horseman TV, and Southeast Equine Magazine. Carolina Hoofbeats is brought to you in part by Newcomb Quarter Horses. Newcomb Quarter Horses with over 40 years experience. Find out how we can help you today. NewcombQuarterHorses.net and also by Carolina Hoofbeats Magazine, a free publication about the horse industry in North Carolina. Catch up on the latest issue at carolinahoofbeats.com. And also by Southeast Equine Magazine, a free publication about the horse industry in the southern United States. Sitting high in the saddle, nothing else matters. My feet in the stirrups, I'm so high.